Welcome to Exposed, Environmental Echoes and Health, a special edition podcast series produced by the Scientist Creative Services team. This series is brought to you by Van Andel Institute, an independent biomedical research institute devoted to improving human health for generations to come. While the human body cells all use the same set of instructions, they can end up with wildly different features and functions. Beyond the information stored in DNA, factors within a person's environment, including chemicals, microbes, and their diet, change how cells work. In this series, we'll talk to researchers at Van Andel Institute who investigate how the environment and behavior change cellular functions through epigenetic processes and learn how they study past, present, and future influences on human health and disease. Through epigenetic mechanisms, some environmental toxicants, such as heavy metals, alter gene expression patterns that then drive cancer progression. In this episode, Nikki Spahich from the Scientist Creative Services team spoke with Dr. Yvonne von Duf mittendorf a professor in the Department of Epigenetics at VAI, about her work studying environmental toxicants and their effects on DNA methylation and chromatin structure. Dr. Yvonne von Dufa mittendorf calls herself an academic tourist. After growing up in Cameroon, she went from Nigeria to Germany to the United States in her pursuit of science. Her childhood dream was to cure diseases, but at the time, she thought the only way to do so was to become a medical doctor. There was just one problem. She didn't like blood. Eventually, through her scientific travels, getting a bachelor's and a master's degree, von Dufa mittendorf was encouraged to pursue a PhD, which led her to research the link between epigenetics and cancer. My PhD was in DNA repair, which is, at the time, I thought most cancers attributed to mutations in the DNA sequence. It wasn't until my first postdoc in Max Planck that I got to know what epigenetics is, which is understanding how diseases are caused without a mutation to the DNA sequence. I got really fascinated. If you can't have a mutation, what else could be happening? And I came to Northwestern and was able to see the different aspects of chromatin biology, where DNA, when it's packaged, slight changes in how that packaging occurs could open up regions of the genome where it's not supposed to open up. Maybe those regions are oncogenes, that means genes that are driving cancers. And so if you open them at particular times when you don't need to, that could actually cause diseases such as cancer. That was really fascinating to me, teasing how opening and closing of the chromatin structure drives diseases. Von Dufa Mittendorf went on to run a laboratory at the University of Kentucky, studying epigenetic changes. Although this is a large institution, she was the lone scientist researching epigenetics and missed being able to discuss the implications of her findings with nearby experts. To be surrounded by other like-minded epigeneticists, she recently made the move to Van Andel Institute, or VAI an organization known for supporting its scientists, from guiding postdoctoral researchers through their burgeoning careers to providing and managing funding for their established professors. VAI also houses multiple core facilities with instruments and experts available to help scientists with their complex experiments. At VAI, Fundufa Mittendorf has found a community that supports her work. We speak the same language. Every day is me talking to other scientists, asking the same basic question. How the packaging of DNA, when dysregulated, drive diseases. I can go down and sequence my stuff right away. I can have the bioinformaticians help me analyze whatever data I have. It just makes my research go a lot faster than it would otherwise have gone. It's given me that opportunity to test things that are risky. And with those risky things, you make more discovery rather than being safe, right? Fandufa Mittendorf's research at VAI focuses on the effects of environmental toxins, such as inorganic arsenic, on DNA and chromatin. When someone is exposed to high arsenic levels, the heavy metal builds up in their soft tissues and causes cellular damage that poisons the body. Low-level exposure, however, is linked to various diseases, including cancer. Arsenic is present in the soil, and industries such as coal mining put their workers and local community members at risk for heavy metal exposure as toxins may leach into the ground and nearby sources of drinking water during the mining process. Another concern is inorganic arsenic leaching into food from the soil, especially rice, which is the biggest food source containing this heavy metal. While we think of only coal mining areas, 
in so many places were exposed. Industrialization is bringing a lot of that. We're burning fossil fuels and exposing heavy metals into the environment. More people than we think are exposed to that. I'm asking basic biology questions. How is the environment modulating chromatin biology to drive specific diseases? There's a correlation between the levels of arsenic exposure to the levels of cancer. I have this thing that could immediately impact so many people if I'm able to find a drug that can actually help those people. If I can understand how arsenic is causing diseases, I might be able to tell them you need to filter your water or help change policies on how that water is filtered so that people are not exposed. To many, it was surprising that arsenic was associated with increased cancer risk because the heavy metal is not a mutagen. Mutagens are often the culprits behind cancer when they cause mutations in oncogenes. Scientists therefore began exploring possible epigenetic mechanisms for arsenic's role in cancer. Some epigenetic changes affect DNA packaging. DNA is packaged in an orderly fashion into chromatin, fibers of DNA, RNA, and proteins that coil together and condense into chromosomes. Chromatin regions that are less compacted give transcription machinery access to DNA, resulting in gene expression, while closed-off areas are inaccessible and silenced. Arsenic exposure seems to change how that packaging occurs. If you're opening things at times when you're not supposed to open, and you're driving expression of genes that could cause cancer, whereas those genes should have been closed up so that they're not accessible to those regulatory factors. So that's really fascinating to me that little tweaks and turns of how this DNA is packaged in the cell could be driving major diseases that we all thought before was due to mutations in DNA sequence. Von Dufa Mittendorf studies this phenomenon with cell and animal models. Early in her toxicology work, She and her research team were studying the heavy metals' effects on a commonly used, non-cancerous human lung epithelial cell line. After treating the cultured, cube-shaped cells with a low dose of arsenic, an undergraduate in the laboratory made a surprising discovery. This undergrad, she had come in two days in a row checking the cells, and she called me. She was so scared because the cells no longer had the square shape. They now had this elongated shape, meaning that they were changing from non-cancerous form to a cancerous form. What was fascinating was they start square and tight and close to each other, and then you just see this star shape coming up. This is not really very high levels of arsenic. What if this was occurring in the cell or in my body, which means that I'm driving a carcinogenic potential, which for me was frightening. In Fadifa Mittendorf's current model, she exposes non-cancerous cells to arsenic and injects them into mice to see if they form tumors while also performing genome-wide sequencing to understand changes in methylation status and chromatin structure. In one set of experiments, she treated cells for 17 weeks to mimic chronic environmental exposure. This caused genome-wide changes in DNA methylation patterns and chromatin packaging, driving changes in gene expression that turned the cells cancerous. After that time period, she removed the arsenic stress, which allowed some, but not all, of the gene expression patterns to revert to normal thanks to the fact that epigenetic changes can be reversed. After the cells were relieved from the chronic exposure, Fondufa Mittendorf treated them with a secondary toxic hit, a high arsenic dose, which resulted in faster tumor development in the mice compared to treatment with cells that did not receive the extra arsenic challenge. So what we're thinking is that you could be going through life being exposed to arsenic and your cells are getting primed. You move away from that region. Maybe some of them revert, but you could then go to another region where you have high UV status in the environment and pushes those cells to a cancerous state. So while you might not have developed cancer at the beginning, a second heat might come in and potentially drive you towards the carcinogenic state. If we can actually understand how these changes are taking place, can we actually deal therapeutics or epigenetic drugs that could target the reversibility of this process? Changes in gene expression are often at the heart of cancer progression. One of the ways arsenic transforms normal cells to cancerous ones is by interfering with methylation patterns in gene regulatory regions. Methylating promoters upstream of genes tends to repress expression, while methylation in a gene's coding region has the opposite effect. 
Fondue von Mitchendorf explores arsenic's effect on methylation by studying regulatory proteins such as CTCF. Some of the genes that this protein regulates are DNA methyltransferases, which deposit methyl groups onto DNA. CTCF is a zinc finger protein whose finger-like projections bind to DNA at multiple sites. By binding to the promoter region of methyltransferase genes, CTCF induces their expression and changes methylation patterns across the genome. Zinc ions are important structural components of the finger region. Van Duffen Mittendorf found that arsenic inserts itself into the fingers and displaces zinc, which changes CTCF's DNA binding patterns, downregulating methyltransferase expression and decreasing DNA methylation. CTCF has further roles in controlling alternative splicing and altering existing methyl groups, both of which also have implications for cancer when disrupted. The fact that we're able to see arsenic is targeting specific zinc fingers, if this is true, then we don't need an invasive method to treat patients because all you could say is, please eat vegetables that have high zinc content. Take zinc supplements. So basic understanding of how this could be driving diseases could help us build therapeutics that are not really invasive. That's very fascinating to me. A recent aspect of Andufa and Bintador's work involves finding the figurative breadcrumbs that arsenic-induced cellular changes leave in the bloodstream. She found that arsenic exposure induces circular RNA expression. This type of RNA is not easily degraded in the body and can be found in the blood, which may lend itself to be a beacon of heavy metal exposures, including arsenic and lead. So if I can detect those circular RNAs that are made when people are exposed to arsenic, we can tell people right from the beginning that you might have been overly exposed to arsenic. Maybe you're in your house and you don't know that your pipe has lead in it. When you go to the hospital, your, your blood is always taken. So if we could use that blood to test particular circular RNAs, we might tell people that you should check your environment, what you eat, what you're drinking. There's a possibility that we're able to come up with these things that can be targeted to help health of the individual or even the diagnosis is very, very important. I'm very excited with that. Supported by our fellow experts at VAI, Van Duffe Mittendorf will continue to unravel the complex mechanisms driving cancer progression in response to heavy metal exposure. Along the way, she and her colleagues will reveal the surprising ways the environment affects humans through epigenetic means. Every day I'm discovering something new. It is still a relatively new field, and the opportunity for discovery is just enormous. If we can understand how the epigenome is reprogrammed, we might be able to develop therapeutics to reverse, since these are reversible. It's really an exciting field, and I'm, I'm so happy to be part of it. Thank you for listening to the final episode of Exposed, Environmental Echoes in Health. And thanks to Dr. Yvonne von Duf mittendorf Professor of Epigenetics at VAI. To keep up to date with future podcasts, follow The Scientist on Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe to The Scientist Lab Talk wherever you get your podcasts.